of legend. You'll have to excuse the coffee today. Today I wanted to talk about one of the worst things about living in Thailand or living abroad in general. And that is at the forefront of my mind right now because obviously it's the World Cup right now and I'm a big uh, fan of the England national team. And sadly, most of the games, that, well, a lot of the games at this World Cup have been at a really, really unreasonable time um, here in Thailand. A lot of the games have been at like two in the morning in the week. So I've been having to uh, sleep after work uh, wake up at two in the morning, watch the game, then try and get a little bit of sleep after, then go to work. I had to do that last night when England uh, beat Wales. At least, um, at least they won the game. It had been pretty grim. Uh, waking up at that time, watching them lose, and then having to go to work after, uh, yeah, a not not too much sleep at all. So this video is a little bit tongue and cheek. Obviously, you get that with the title. You know, the worst thing about living in Thailand. However. It is a real thing, it does exist, and it, it is pretty grim for sports fans, not just football fans, but for sport fans in general. Uh, living in a, you know, in a different continent, oftentimes, it means your schedule will seriously clash with lots of major sports games, um, which is you know, pretty, pretty significant for some people. I actually knew an American guy who I used to work with, who was a big NFL fan, and one of the reasons why he went back home, but it wasn't the sole reason, but one of the reasons was you know, it sucked for him not being able to see his sports team play week in, week out. Especially when you are living abroad, especially when you're living in a very different culture, very far away. You know, you already do feel uh, like disconnected from your family uh, and from a lot of the things that you loved in your previous life when, before you moved abroad. Uh, so something like a big sports event, something like the World Cup or the NBA or the Premier League or anything like that, it's not just the big tournaments. A lot of the Premier League games or Champions League games are in very um, difficult, are very awkward times often. Uh, when you're living out here and it doesn't help that feeling of disconnect when you know you can't even participate in watching on tv or it's very difficult to participate in watching on tv and um, something like the world cup which you would usually do and um, which you know if you're at school in england and england are playing oftentimes classes will be cancelled tvs will be wheeled in i'm sure there are plenty of people taking time off work uh, for this world cup you know given that it's not in the summer holidays as it typically would be so it is something that is, you know, for a lot of us, a massive deal, a big thing. And yeah, like I say, you know, you're not going to get any consideration out here from your employers if you want to take time off to watch something like a football match. And then the game times also, like I just mentioned, like last night I had to wake up at a quarter to two, get the TV on, get everything found. You know, I had like one drink, watch the game, then straight back to bed. It was really weird. I had to try and sleep early get up and then go back to bed for a couple more hours and then I was in work um, you know like I mentioned thank god we won otherwise that would have been a pretty grim day today this may be trivial for some people if you're not a sports fan you may think this is a pointless video however I don't think it is completely trivial you do or you could potentially like miss out on world and um, you know historically significant events such as our you know sporting tournament finals especially on the international stage and um, so yeah this is something that has been grinding me down a little bit recently uh, so yeah, I thought I would make a quick video about it and talk about it a little bit. Let me show you what I mean. Uh, let me pull out my phone now and we'll have a look. At, I'll show you the schedule. I'll show you the schedule for Thailand for this World Cup. Let me just go over to Google here. All right, so as you can see, the Wales-England game last night. England won 3 now. Beautiful game. It was a reasonable good, good game. <laughs> um, but yeah, you can see it was today. It didn't say the time actually because it's in the past, but it was at 2 in the morning. So was the Iran-USA game. I, another massive like kind of historically intense sort of football game Iran USA I would have loved to watch that game it was clashed with the England game so I couldn't but if it hadn't have I wouldn't have been getting up for it because I'm not sort of as emotionally attached however I do, would feel like I was missing out a great deal not being able to see that game and um, so like today we've got two games that kick off at 10 o'clock Poland Argentina Saudi Arabia Mexico both two in the morning you know like I said if I was somewhere else in the world I'd probably watch those games or at least one of them can't um, again, two in the morning, two in the morning for the Japan-Spain game. That is a game I would love to see, especially because I live in Asia. But, you know, two in the morning. Costa Rica, Germany, two in the morning. And it gets even worse when we get to the knockout stages. Netherlands, USA, again, 10 o'clock. That's not too bad. Um, but the England-Senegal game, 2 a.m. on a Monday. So it's two in the morning Monday, so I would have to go to work. Again, I'm probably going to have to wake up uh, 1.50 again. Uh, like I don't know if this is going to kill me this World Cup I think waking up for these games but 2 in the morning 10 o'clock 2 in the morning 10 o'clock 2 in the morning 
all the way all the quarterfinals half the quarterfinals are at two in the morning the other two are at um, 10 o'clock the semi-finals are both at two in the morning um, and the third place playoff is at 10 the finals at 10 p.m which isn't too bad but you can see there's a whole host of games there's a lot of games there and um, that are all at two in the morning that i would love to watch but i can't and it's not just um it's not just the world cup it's not just for football fans or um, soccer fans depending where you're from uh, let's take a quick look at the nba schedule for basketball fans uh, so you can see most of these games tomorrow are all at 7 30 in the morning eight in the morning nine in the morning now those times aren't as um, disruptive as like a two in the morning however if you work like at least you can wake up in the middle of the night to catch the football game that's at two in the morning if you're working if you're like teaching like i am you know you're starting work eight eight twenty you're in the classroom so you you wouldn't be able to watch any of these games because they're all in the week they're all um at eight in the morning when you probably either be just getting to work or just starting work you you can't watch any of these games live which could be really significant for you if you are a sports fan nfl is pretty similar eight in the morning or in the middle of the day most of the games seem to be um, so yeah, once again, you know, if you're working full time, which um, you know a lot of people are who are living out here, this this would be a big problem for you being able to watch these games. I can't remember the last time I watched Champions League um, football. Luckily, I'm not as invested in club football, um, so the Champions League is less of a big deal for me um, personally compared to the big international tournaments like the Euros and the World Cup. But yeah, I, I, normally I would watch the Champions League. You know, obviously it's a massive footballing event. But, you know, I don't really get up for it. I don't wake up because they're, they're, they're all pretty late in, at night as well. They're all like one in the morning, two in the morning. Uh, so oftentimes I miss those as well. Perhaps this is all very trivial to you. Perhaps you think I'm complaining for the sake of complaining. Perhaps you get it. Perhaps you, um, uh, you're thankful. Maybe this isn't something you would think about. Maybe this would be a massive deal. Maybe this would influence uh, you living abroad or living in a different country. I know it's been grinding me down a little bit. Fortunately, I, like I say, I've been able to wake up, get a little bit of sleep before, a little bit of sleep after, still watch the games still work just about so yeah it's not having too much of a major impact on my life other than sort of being a bit sleep deprived i think after all these complaints if you're wondering why i live in thailand or why i choose to live in thailand then i did make a video about that recently uh, so maybe you should check out that for some balance and i'll leave a link to that video right here so yeah check that out if you're interested